Yo, what up? So, you're interested in splitting steel champion as a leak starter, eh? Well, good news for you, I was as well. I've been developing this POB and doing practice runs for the last three days, and the good news is, is that this is my leading candidate for my league start in Hardcore Trade. If you didn't know, I always play Hardcore Trade. It's my favorite form of PoE. What you're seeing in the background is a character put together by duct tape and glue to try and simulate an awful version of my endgame build. And despite it still only being on a 5 link, you're supposed to wear a lionized vision, I didn't have one. And half the gems being level 15 or 16, this was already acceptable enough for me to be like, this is tanky, I feel the damage will get better, I'm happy with this already. If so far it's good enough for you, then let's continue. If you've never seen a complete build guide from me, then I'm going to give you the good and the bad right now because I don't want to waste your time or bullshit you. If it's not good enough for me to play, why the hell would I tell you to play it? So let's talk about the bad first. What you're seeing right now is the only bad mark I have against this build. On day one, going off of Affliction League prices, on day one last league, it was 144 chaos. On day two, it was 100. Day three, it was... 25c it was affordable now don't worry it's not like we need this to do maps or anything like that i absolutely did a practice run with hot garbage damage and barely getting a 400 dpsx and i was able to comfortably farm t10 maps you know using typical melee stuff berserk impale and just being a champion to kind of you know breeze through the first early parts so that that's completely fine the problem is is that after that tier 10 map mark two-handed axes just don't cut it anymore so my plan is that I'm going to pit stop in tier 10 maps, clean up my atlas, do expedition for a little bit, save up some money, and then buy my bell timber blade and the rest of the uniques I plan on getting. This will mostly be a day one problem, so if you're a fast gamer, then keep this in mind and make a plan. If you don't plan on really hitting tier 10 maps until day two or three, this is probably not a big deal for you. The rest of the uniques are 5 to 10c items. Over here in the notes section, you're going to have the basic information, the recipe to make your access through the campaign. The bases you'll be looking for if you want to make your filter, some general information, what I was using, you know, just the basic crap. Here's the list of the uniques that you're going to want and the price that I found for them. And as I just showed you, I just used PoE Ninja for the last two league starts to get an average idea of their price. And outside of the Bell Timber, you're completely fine. The only thing to note that you're probably curious about now is nerf. Yes, Sniper's Mark was nerfed and that did affect this build. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. The good news is that the replacement for that nerf is just a Fury Valve Amulet. It's a 10c item, it's really common, and you can wear it as early as level 40 if you somehow, someway found one on day one. The bad news is obviously you lose an amulet slot because of the nerf, but aside from that, the nerf really didn't do anything. The only hurdle we have to overcome is just the bell timber, and when we get to that part I'll go into more detail exactly what my whole plan is, but for now, that's good enough. As this is a complete guide, I will show you two ways to level, and I'm going to go break down piece by piece exactly what I'm going to recommend you do, because... I did the practice run, I did the test, and this is what my results were. So knowing me, this is going to be a long one, but I'm going to do my best to give you as much info as I can, and hopefully not waste your time. Shameless plug time, I've been streaming at waffles underscore gg on Twitch, that's where you can find me, xdd, <laughs> gotta get it in there. Now the first thing I like to do at the start of these is to show you that there is no pad going on here, what you're seeing is legit. The final version of this build with implicits on your gloves, you know, the Searing Exarch Eater stuff, we're going to be at about 5.3 million damage on, you know, Guardian Pinnacle bosses ticked. Always make sure of this on every POB. That's a general piece of advice if you're a new player. I understand there are a lot, so I'm going to take my time and really try to get this through to you. Over here on the skills section, you're going to see Splitting Steel. It has nine count. Now let's try to make this as simple as possible. We're running return projectiles. You attack with Splitting Steel. It will split five times to five different targets. It doesn't matter if it's targeting a mob or literally air, it will always shoot out five, okay? So those five projectiles will then shoot out, come back and hit the mob again. The way we scale the damage is to just get more projectiles so they all shoot out and they all come back and they all multiply, right? So let's just count the projectiles here. We got five. Sniper Marks gives us two. Used to be four, but it's just two now. So now we're at seven. Belt Timber Blade will give us two, which is why it's our best in slot weapon. So now we're at nine. On the tree, we're going to take this, so we get that extra projectile, so that's 10. And to make up for the nerf, we use Fury Valve, which would put us at 12. However, you may have noticed, even though I say we have 12, I'm only putting 9. And that's me just being honest with you that, yes, some projectiles will all shoot out. Some of them are going to miss. On average, I estimate about 3, maybe 4 will miss. But the bigger the target, the more likely they all hit. Most general mathematicians who are much smarter than me agree that about 9 at this many projectiles is about right. Give or take, you just take off 3. 
So we have 12 total, take off three, we end up at 5.3 million damage, okay? We're not running level 21 or anything like that, you know what I mean? We're not cheesing, it's just level 20, 20 quality, very straightforward. And over here, hidden in their gloves, we have Berserk, but we do not have Berserk on. If you turn this on, you will hit 8 million damage for the time period that you use Berserk. But this is not reliable. This is definitely good to kill, you know, map bosses very quickly and stuff. So if it's not consistent, why turn it on? So it's there, it's a part of the build, but it's not up 100% of the time, so I will not count it. Now, a big important thing, do not remove this. This is to simulate return projectiles because the gem return projectiles does not work in POB. It doesn't calculate. You can go over here and turn it off, turn it on. It just affects your mana. So we have to simulate this, and I believe about 50% less damage is give or take the right amount. Return projectiles is 61% less damage. However, if I was to turn everything off here, you can see that just our first normal projectile with nothing else will still do about 600,000 damage. If you turn this off, your first attack does not count for that less damage on return projectiles because it's normal and it's not returning. So your first hit actually is doing 1.2 million damage. So to account for that, I believe about 50% less damage is give or take the right amount. But regardless, 5.3 million damage on this end game version. And now let's go through this real quick. We have Frenzy charges permanently because we have Frenzy on hit from Sniper's Mark. It's on the tree. Right here you get Mark Mastery. Frenzy charges keeps your Frenzy charges up the whole time. You have Life Tap. It's on our six link. That's how we get around mana because fuck mana. That shit's bullshit these days. We have Permanent Onslaught because we are indeed going to wear a Perseverance Belt. Fortified, Champion, no shit. Rage, I just leave this on one. We have Rage off of our gloves. Obviously, the early versions of this build aren't going to exactly have this, but the end game does. And we're just talking about end game right now. We'll go through that part later. Movement skill recently. This is a belt timber thing. You have to leap slam or something at least every four seconds, but it's not a big deal. You're going to have to jump around anyway. Impaled an enemy recently. This just makes us a little bit tankier. Pride, max aura effect. When you're fighting bosses, you should always be within that pride area. So this should always be max effect against big boy bosses. Projectile distance. This is from far shot on the bell timber. That's why bell timber is so good. Far shot is insane for this. And again, mathematicians much smarter than me all decided that it does reach the full distance when it hits, bounces out, comes back. So 70 distance. Aside from that, make sure this is on Guardian Pinnacle. You now know how the build works. So let's get to the leveling part. If you're new here, I do make pretty detailed guys. I try to give you multiple versions to level. And this version, I have a resolute technique which will be definitely easier to play, but a little bit worse in the one to 10 tier maps. It'll be a little bit worse. Then I have precise technique leveling, which you have to micromanage your accuracy while leveling. I kind of set up the tree as best I could to simulate it. So you hopefully don't have to think too much, but basically the difference is, is that you have to respect more if you do resolute technique by going left side of the tree, but you get more, you know, initial armor and it's a little bit easier on the nodes. The bad news is that the end game tree is on the right side. So if you go precise technique earlier, you're going to be wanting to focus on just trying to pick up accuracy gear. It is going to be more damage than resolute technique. That's just how precise technique works. 40% more damage when your accuracy is above your HP bar. Main hand accuracy, you have 4,600 life. So as long as I have one more point of accuracy than my HP, we're good to go. AKA 4,600 life, you want probably 4,700 accuracy to be safe. If you had 5k life, then you'd probably want 5,100 accuracy total. Like I said, I did my best to try to level precision on each tier and set. Speaking of which, if you've never seen this before over here in skills, here's all the options for you. The resolute technique version, precise technique version. And over here in the items, it's very simple. The only thing I'd recommend you look out for is a fury valve on league start. The rest of the stuff, I'm not going to recommend a bunch of uniques. I didn't use them. I felt fine. If you know any uniques you want to use, knock yourself out. This is league start. This isn't your second character. So I'm going to keep it pretty goddamn bare bones if I can. The other benefit is just simple. You don't have to respect points. So if you go right side and you kind of have that seamless transition, you never have to pit stop and switch your gear really. And if you're curious, yes, I will be leveling precise technique through the campaign on hardcore trade. I don't think it's particularly too hard. You just have to be a little bit more aware of what you're looking for. For me, it's fine. If you're worried about it or you're a newer player, just go ahead and do resolute technique. It's fine. But also keep in mind, melee leveling in general is not newer player friendly these days. So you've been warned. But I'm going to do my best. So let's start off. Skills, Act 1, you know, leveling. Make sure this is all correct. Go in Act 1. Very straightforward, very simple. You're just going to level Spectral Throw, Volley. Chance to Bleed is your MVP. This kind of carries melee leveling. It has flat fizz. When mobs move, they take a lot of damage. But nothing special here. You know, Precision, War Banner, Ancestral Protector with Maim, Frost Blink, and Leap Slam. The footage you're seeing on the bottom right is going to be my campaign run garbage gear but if you want to see what it looked like for me there you go 
The only tip I can give you as a new player is when you use War Banner, you do want to put this on the ground. Don't just turn it on and ignore it. When you're, you know, getting to Brutus or Mervel or whoever, when you have an opportunity to do a lot of damage, when the boss just teleported or you see them doing a long animation, put down the War Banner and use that time to just min-max DPS. And typically this is enough to kind of give you a burst of about 30% of their health. Good trick, but as melee, you got to take advantage of everything you can. Spectral Throw is pretty good though, and you're going straight into Spectral Helix, nothing special here. You still just run in Chance to Bleed, Vicious, all this stuff is pretty much the exact same, but you're going to pick up Poacher's Mark. This is really good because it lowers Fizz Reduction. It also gives you life and mana on hit, so for early game boss killing on melee, really fucking good. Your tree is very straightforward, nothing special, you know, mana early on. Basic two-handed nodes, you're just using a two-hander the entire time you're leveling. Sword or axe doesn't matter until about level 23. Once you're about level 23 plus, only start looking for axes. Do not pick up swords. This is the axe wheel, and it's honestly one of the best wheels in the entire game. It's very simple. You get onslaught, on kill. You have a 20% chance. Onslaught's insane for leveling. It's just insane in general. The big reason, though, is this. You can get rage on hit. Rage is a really good thing. It gives you attack speed, general damage, and it kind of just stacks while you have this node. The biggest reason we run rage, though, is just berserk. Berserk, you just expend your rage. It's a, oh shit, do a lot of damage to a boss button. Or, hey, this rare mob's really tanky. You press berserk. And this thing just absolutely obliterates stuff. However, it's level 34, so we can't take advantage of the rage super early on, but it's just really good ultimately. The rest of the tree is pretty straightforward. You're just getting more damage, and we're going to get some reservation because you want to run as many little mini auras as you can, you know, level precision up till this point. So, so far so good. Nothing particularly special, right? Well, now you need to make your choice. Personally, I'm going to be leveling precise technique. You can level resolute technique. So let's just start with resolute technique first. And then we'll go to the precise technique version second. All right, so this next maybe two to three minutes is just gonna be resolute technique conversation. After that, we'll do precise technique. And please keep in mind that you always have these matching. Precise technique, resolute technique. It's a little complicated, I understand. It's a lot of words, but please, you will fuck your tree up and everything if you do not do this correctly. Act five plus resolute technique leveling. Your skills, resolute technique leveling. There is a difference. It took me quite a bit of time to make sure these were correct. So please follow these. Don't break your build. I, I I would hate for somebody to break their build. So I just, I got to let you know. All right. Make sure everything's lining up. You're leveling Spectral Helix up to level 38. Kill Malachi. All right. You're playing Spectral Helix. You're on a four link. Everything's kind of going fine. You know, you're like playing Spectral Helix, whatever. It's chill. It's not the greatest, you know, but it gets the job done. I highly recommend you kill Malachi. Do not switch to Splitting Steel at level 38. Finish Act 4. Kill Malachi. After you've killed Malachi, then switch to Splitting Steel, okay? This is a thing I think a lot of people do sometimes is you can use new thing very soon. Don't do that. You don't know how it's going to feel. Maybe you made a mistake. Maybe you weren't leveling a support. The swap to Splitting Steel is fine, but if you do it against a boss, you might just break yourself, okay? So don't do that. Kill Malachi. Make your way to Act 5. Switch to Splitting Steel. Now you're good to go, all right? If you chose to go Resolute Technique, then make your straight line to Resolute Technique. You want to drop Precision as soon as possible. The fastest way is to pretty much just go from here and go straight to RT. After that, get your Axe Wheel, get your HP, whichever one you want. My personal memory is that whenever I fight Katava in Act 5, I want at least 1600 HP. So I don't know what number you're thinking of, but for me in Hardcore, I always think 1600 HP no matter what. Once I have that number, I start pumping damage. I guess that's a little bit of a tip for you or a little bit of wisdom from me. Sniper's Mark, you no longer need Poacher's Mark when you're splitting steel. You want those extra two projectiles from this. And Resolute Technique gets to run Pride earlier than Precise Technique. Precise Technique, you have to run Precision early so you don't have the mana. But this version, kind of up front, it's going to start at higher damage because you can just run Pride and War Banner together. We're adding in Blood Rage because you're going to have a little bit of Leech just in general. And the Frenzy Charges and the Attack Speed just is really good for leveling. It's worth the cost. Nothing changes on anything else, but at this point, you're level 34, you can get Berserk. Make sure you get this, you know, do library, whatever the hell you gotta do. Just, you know, get berserk, make sure you're, you're using it. It's your rare killer, it's your boss killer, it's your oh shit button. You take less damage, you do a fuck ton more. Very good. From this point on, it's very straightforward. You know, get whatever order you want. We're getting some res here. We're getting some overwhelm for the impale stuff. And we're getting soul of steel just to, you know, get some actual armor and some percent armor. Aside from that, very straightforward, very simple. Uh, unfortunately, you know, this is the true for both versions. Champion just kind of sucks, but for hardcore mentality, I'm going to get Unstoppable Hero, then Fortitude. You know, Unstoppable Hero literally doesn't do anything until you have Fortify, so you just don't have an Ascendancy until like level 50-something. 
It sucks, but it is what it is. Fortifies OP. Now let's talk about the maps version for Resolute Technique. Up here, skills, Resolute Technique. It's very simple. You're pretty much just adding life tap to everything. Not much changes. You can add Herald of Purity because you have the mana now. That's about it. While you were leveling, maybe you know used a mana flask or whatever you had to do to level the process. I'd recommend an enduring mana flask if you have a lot of alterations and you know you were actually selling all your non-usable items, picking stuff up. Enduring mana flask will really carry you, you know, up till about act six, act seven. At that point, you'll have enough damage, your mana leech will kick in, life leech, and then you're pretty much just off to the races. Races. Jesus, English. You do want to be picking up accuracy gear though, just because your resolute technique, you want accuracy gear, you will switch to precise technique eventually. It's just more of up to when you're ready to do it. And I still recommend you go right side tree because of suppression over here. And ultimately recommending you go left side tree more would just mean your respect's going to be really painful. So I figured, fuck it. You got to bite the bullet at some point. So, you know, get your ass over here, get to this side of the tree and make the transition to precise technique when you're ready. You know, don't rush it. Make sure your accuracy is correct, but eventually precise technique is the way to go. But if you wanted to stay resolute technique for a long time, I'd rather give you the option than rather tell you there's no choice you have to do something. This is fine. This is what I did on my my run, but the better damage option and the overall smoother option is going to be precise technique. So yeah, I did this. It was fine. This would eventually be better though. But that's it for resolute technique. Pretty straightforward. In and out. Let's talk about precise technique now. Now, precise technique, you're actually going to have more mana because we can't fit another aura in because you have to keep precision if you're going to choose to do this route. You're going to want to find accuracy, you know, amulet, ring, or whatever. If you don't have a fury valve, you can get accuracy on your amulet pretty easy. You craft it. The only big difference between this version and resolute technique is that that version can run pride earlier than this version can, but this version will definitely do more damage just because precise technique is that busted. The other benefit of this version is that you get leech fairly early on. And you get a lot of help with your reses. You know, you have over here, cloth and chain, that's good. But you also can get weathered hunter. It's really good accuracy, flat accuracy, but also you get res along the way. So the downside is that, you know, resolute technique is a little bit easier, kind of more mindless, but this version will get a bigger damage jump and you get a little bit more help on your tree. You can get suppression early on and you don't have to respec really at all. So keep leveling precision. You're going to wear it for a while and then eventually we're going to get rid of it. Let's talk about that now. So up here, there is no maps version because Resolute Technique, you know, you're not really supposed to be that version for a very long time. You can just go straight to the end game version with Precise Technique. This version, very similar to Resolute Technique, you're just adding life tap to stuff. Nothing special here. Everything's pretty much the same, but you will eventually add Grace. Now, mana is tight, but that's where we're going to add life tap. Ideally, around this point, you know, you'd have a lionized vision on both versions, right? You get to maps. Buy a lionized vision, hood in life tap, which means you don't need to wear pierce. Lionized vision does indeed have level 15 pierce on it. It's a pseudo five link, pseudo six link, and then eventually a pseudo seven link. It's very good. This is why I'm recommending it on a league start build. So for both versions, get a lionized vision, run life tap as soon as you can, and drop pierce. Once you have the life tap set up here and you have life tap on everything else, you can then add grace. This sets you up for perseverance belt when you get it. On this version, I don't know if what order people are going to get items. So I said, you know, Lion Eyes Vision, Fury Valve are the first two items I'd want to buy. And grace is obviously just an amazing defensive tool. So for now, it's just defense. But once you get perseverance belt, because grace, armor, scaling, stuff like that, you just get a lot of damage. We'll go into a little bit more detail than that if you just don't quite know how it works. Aside from just keeping track of your accuracy the whole time, staying on top of it, you know, ultimately, there's not too much of a difference between precise technique and resolute technique. It's just a higher requirement of you, you know, being aware of what you need on your gear, stuff like that. But that's about it. As a basic recommendation for both versions, I'm going to say Master of Metal first. The aura thing is cool, but you can't really take advantage of it on both versions. And ultimately, we are Impale, and Splitting Steel does have Impale Chains on it, so we may as well take advantage of that. Get Master of Metal. This is a big damage increase and uh, kind of the whole core of the build, to be honest. But aside from that, that's how you level the build. There's really not too much to say besides that. Once you kind of get going, you know how to play the build. Not too much changes besides the two-handed swap. So let's just briefly go over the end game. Now, because this is League Start, we're not really doing anything besides just using essences. I'm not referencing any fractured items or any of that crap here. Ultimately, you need accuracy. So you're going to want accuracy on your helmet. You know, you're going to try to get accuracy on your gloves. This is the end game version of the tree, so obviously this gear should be respectable, but not crap. 
You know, I didn't put any T1 life rolls or anything on here, but you know, you do need to be aware that, hey, you need res here, you need accuracy here. You should probably wear two amethyst rings. Amethyst rings are the OP thing. You just get a little bit, roll them with yellow harvest juice. Ideally, you get accuracy, but don't worry. You can anoint Fury Valve with, you know, depth perception. You know, both trees kind of have a little bit of help to get you, you know, your accuracy, but you can anoint depth perception to get you that accuracy boost. Now you see just doing that anoint, 5.4k accuracy. Switching back to the other one, 700 difference, right? So there's different anoints you can do at different stages of the build, but we're just going to go over kind of the end game version now. And let's just kind of go over how my plan works with Belt Ember. I'm going to go League Start. I'm going to get the first four points into the Essence node. That Essence node guarantees Essence on maps. Now, it's not like I'm going to sit there and do every four mod Essence I see. No, that would be stupid for me. That's hardcore trade level. Like, I'm, I'm not doing that. Now, in softcore, hey, however you use the tools I give you, that's up to you. But for me, if I see a four Essence mod, even if I was playing Armageddon brand cremation, I'd probably just skip it on League Start. Like, there's no way. Not until I know I can kill that thing and just stand there am I going to attempt a 4 Essence mod. But we need Screaming Essence of Zeal. We need Screaming Essence of Contempt. That's how we're going to craft our two-handed axe. All that information, again, is in the notes section if you need to remind yourself later and you don't want to find this part of the video. So, again, notes section, pretty OP. It even briefly goes over my strategy. But to get my Bell Timber Blade, my Lionized Vision, Fury Valve, Perseverance, I'm just doing Expedition. I'm going to pick up Essences along the way. Once I feel really strong and I have all my points into Expedition, I'll start adding points into Betrayal, go farm white maps. Betrayal crafts are obviously really just good to get early on. I do not plan on getting them in the campaign if you know what trick that is. I'm just going to stay in white maps, farm Betrayal. Once I'm happy with that, I'll move on. But Expedition is how I plan on getting all of my, my money, my regret orbs, and my alchemy orbs because without Wildwood, we're not going to have a lot of those materials and Necro, Necro fuckhead league doesn't exactly look like it's going to drop me a lot of alchemies and regret orbs, you know what I'm saying? So I got to progress my atlas somehow. So this is two birds, one stone. I can build money to save up to my bell timber, get my items and shit like that. Rog hopefully, you know, gives me some pretty good gear. Eventually he's going to give me, you know, my eye level 85, 84 bases that I need. If you didn't know that when you hit level 90, Rog now has access to those end game rare items. And that's how people get their eye level stuff. So I plan on just doing expedition to make all my money, get my bases, roll my gear. And the bad news is that, yeah, this is a lot of uniques. The good news is that it is a lot of uniques, which means I only have to focus my money and my time on a few items. Unfortunately, this, yes, does mean these items need to be actually legitimately wearable and good. But it also means that I can get 5 million damage once I get these few items completed. Now let's just talk about some functionality, right? We're kind of glancing over these. Let's just talk about the Bell Timber Blade. So, first of all, it's only a 300 DPS sword. It's not that insane. It's just far shot. That's literally it. Far shot is just OP. The two projectiles are OP, and that alone makes this our best in slot weapon. Uh, you can swap the order. Maybe it's Dream Feather and Bell Timber. It really just depends on the role you have on the weapon. So, whichever one, just keep that one in mind. Dream Feather is a 2C unique the entire league. The good news is that these both have accuracy rolls on them, and Dream Feather has a double accuracy roll. The reason why Dream Feather is really good is because there is a grow with Shank that does exist, but it sucks. It has point blank on it, and ultimately, it's just a damage loss. So even though it has two proj on it, fuck that item. I'm not even going to show you it. Dream Feather, we're going to stack with the Perseverance with Grace Determination. Perseverance will give us permanent onslaught because we are always fortified. We are a champion. And then you get more damage for just having high amounts of armor and high amounts of evasion. That's really all this says. We're just doubling down on that with Dream Feather. Dream Feather is just going to give us accuracy and then just more damage for having a lot of evasion so we're just rewarded on both sides nothing special here this isn't some new tech i invented this is an old school thing that's just kind of been revived because we have a new build to play it with lionized vision pretty straightforward it's a seven link it's got good life it has really high armor and even though it does not have decks on it it does have decks as a requirement which means this is actually very easy to roll you know you're just looking for red and greens on paper this is just an armor item but because that dex requirement is added there as text, it's actually a armor and evasion item. It just thinks it's an armor item. You know, it's kind of stupid. But yeah, this is just your seven link. It's just a way to get even more damage on a league start build. You can just decide to not wear this. But for me, I'm just going to wear a line eyes vision. It's completely fine. I don't really want to overthink it. My defenses are good enough for me to league start, clear T16 maps, get my watchstones, and then start saving up for my other builds that I want to play. Fury Valve, I already talked about it, but yeah, it's just two proj, 19 all res, like to 20% all res. Just really good. Master of Blades is a giga anoint. 
Now, one little quick tidbit here is that Overwhelm functionally just works insanely well with Impale. So we have to just get Overwhelm wherever we can. That's why we have this Overwhelm, this one, and that's why we anoint this one. It's literally like 16% less damage if we just don't anoint this and there's like nothing else that's even close. It is a golden oil, so yeah, if you need accuracy, anoint something else. You know, you can just click this no power here if you wanna look for other options to anoint. But for me, end game, master of blaze, early game, Death perception just to get my accuracy up, make it a little bit easier on my gear. And aside from that, the helmet. Corel craft, fizz damage taken. Same thing on the implicit fizz damage taken. Uh, there's really nothing else to take on that other one. Reduced mana is just, you know, fine. We are spending a lot of HP, so it's something. The gloves. This is a big one. Now, overwhelm, like I just said, with impale is really good, so you can get overwhelmed. Cool. Now, that gain rage is really, really good. There's a small tech here going on. If you just have that roll. Like, we don't care about getting 55 Rage. All we care is that this activates the ability for us to use Berserk, which we've already talked about. However, that also means that this wheel here, which would have a terrible mastery otherwise, actually has Intimidate when we just have one Rage. You know, and that's a nice comfy 6 to 7% more damage. And so it's just a really good easy tech. It accesses Berserk and it gives us that Intimidate. So for value, this thing's kind of fucking crazy. I'm not going to lie. This build would be so much worse if I couldn't get Rage on gloves. Now, there is an alternative. You can wear the Combs gloves. Let me pull them up real quick. You've got these. These give you Rage a little bit more easier, and they're like a 2C unique, so if you wanted to, you can wear these. But for me, I'd rather value the other resistances and stuff. If you want, these are another option. Give you that Rage. Give you a lot more Rage than what I'm going to have. You get Berserk a lot more uptime with this, but I'm just going to go with these. These are fine for me. Boots, nothing special. Get your res. You can't get accuracy on these. We're not really going for any avoid element stuff, but it's better than having nothing. And then your rings, pretty straightforward. I always craft my rings by putting them in harvest and then using yellow juice on them. So, you know, after I have all my gear set up and ready to go, I pretty much always will just go and just do harvest. It's really easy to farm. It's really easy to sail. Sail? Sell? Yeah, sell. That's a word. But nothing special on here, you know, get your accuracy where you can. Always keep track of it over here. That's pretty much the gear. Having a lot of uniques is a good thing because once you have them, you're pretty much set and you know what to expect. The bad news is that you got to buy them and, you know, work on them. Besides the Bell Timber Blade, none of this should be hard to get. It should be very cheap. Come up with a plan, get an idea of what you want to do, and then you buy it, okay? Seriously, please, have a plan. Do not just play this build and wear two-handed axes and go and try to do T16 red maps. I tested it. It's not good. You would need like a 580 DPS axe for it to even be like relatively decent. And at that point, just like sell that axe and just use that money to save up to a belt timber. Okay. Do not use two handed axes past like tier 10. If you have like a good 500 DPS axe, sure. Go ahead. You can do your low tier 11 to 13 or whatever. Go for it. Knock yourself out. But I'd recommend, or at least what I'm going to do is just put my ass down, farm up the money, get the blade, move on and enjoy the rest of my league start and hopefully i did a good job at mostly explaining everything i can it is 1 a.m these take a long time to make and my voice is shot so i'm knocking it out here i'm stopping good luck have a good one i stream at twitch.tv waffles underscore gg i didn't even stream this entire process that was a stupid thing that was a waste i could have did this whole thing on stream but i looked at the clock eight hours had passed and i was in pob the whole time so you know what you know just I go fuck myself. Have a good one. I'll catch you later.